وسهلا بكل الذين ينضموا للاستماع الى راديو بلدي او راديو عربي امريكي ويعنى بقضايا العرب في المهجر. برامجنا في راديو بلدي كل يوم جمعه من الثامنه وحتى التاسعه صباحا مع ليلى الحسيني في بث حي ومباشر وعبر دبليو ان زي كي راديو 690 اي ام صباح الخير بلدي صباح الخير لكل مستمعينا Welcome to Radio Baladi, the first Arab, Middle Eastern, and American simulcast radio show. Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNZK 690 AM from 8 until 9 Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan with Layla Al Husseini. Our call in number 248-557-3300. And now, stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues with your host, Layla Al Husseini. <laughs> Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Good morning. As the November elections approach, serious questions are being raised. Serious because they affect long-held constitutional tradition. President Trump is suggesting to delay the presidential election, which can also change the majority in the two congressional chambers. The reason? The coronavirus pandemic. But there is an additional question. What happens if Mr. Trump is defeated, but refuses to leave the Oval Office? Would that invite armed militias to come to Lafayette Park to support him? There are more questions that raise a bigger concern. Are American Constitution traditions facing threats from the pandemic and the Trump-demic? In the next hour, we will be discussing these and other questions with a group of distinguished guests. Mr. Saba Shami, founder of Virginia Arab American Political Forum. Attorney J. Michael Springman, former diplomat and author of two books, and Ms. Renee Ahe, public relations and marketing professional. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, on Radio Baladi. And let me begin with a question to Mr. Uh, Springman, being a diplomat and an attorney. Mr. Springman, can the president single-handedly delay the elections? No, we can't. That would take an act of Congress. Um, but I, I think we're looking at the wrong end of the telescope here. Uh, we're only speculating about things that have not happened yet. Yet, over the past year, uh, of 15 or 16 states and territories that have delayed primary elections, uh, 11 of those were commanded by Democratic state governors and three by Republican state governors. Uh, I, I think so far to date, it's the, been the Democrats, for the majority, who have tried to do elections and who are very much concerned about uh, the outcome of the events on November 3rd of this year. Mr. Sabah Shami, uh, being a leader within the Arab American community, um, explain to us how Arab American, uh, generally, the Arab American community is voting uh, for why, Mr. Biden or Mr. Trump this time? I believe it's a very simple equation. Uh, Trump plus policies equals disaster for both America and Arab America. A Biden plus elections improves that outcome a little bit. And I hate to say a little bit, because as far as the Arab American community, despite all the events that took place since 1948, meaning since the establishment of Israel and the loss of Palestine, uh, it has been the single most important issue. Some argue that uh, we are wishful, we Palestinian Americans are wishful that that's not the case anymore. 
let's assume that it, we are wishful, but a good portion of the Arab American community in America is uh, still motivated by Palestinian rights. So between Trump and Biden, the difference, if you really look into the details of it, uh, there isn't a huge difference, honestly. Maybe Biden is uh, not a, a, a racist, uh, right-wing uh, monger, but clearly, you know, he made statements since I became aware of him uh, when I first came to America 42 years ago. He does not lack credentials to be disliked by the bulk of the Arab American community. However, he did some uh, attempts to uh, appease the Arab and Muslim communities, and we've had uh, multiple meetings with his chief aides. And uh, while uh, we never received a decisive kind of word, we will not say this, we will not endorse that, we get a general feeling that uh, they just don't want to make statements that will actually focus the attention of those who disagree with us at what's happening in the campaign. Because the campaign is a normal democratic campaign, uh, trying to appease the most powerful and the most plentiful in terms of resources to support the candidate. I believe that, you know, the past three and a half years, four years, have taught the Jewish community a lesson that, yes, you will have the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem, you can annex some parcels of, of land in the West Bank, but no, you have 18 senators and 150-some members of the House uh, opposing any change of status of the territories occupied in 1967. Therefore, I think the Democrats are necess necessarily have to play it a little safer, even if the uh, leaders of the Jewish community almost hinted in several occasions that they expect Biden to at least respect some of the things, the facts that were created on the ground. And I say to you, none of the 150-some uh, members of the House and 18 senators will pull back from positions that they know is the only path to creating peace and create two, two livable states, especially the Palestinian one. Uh, so to just, you know, uh, uh, put Mr. Biden in a small, cute box and say, this is a racist and this is uh, a moderate, moderate of what for what and where i mean i was at a dinner in richmond virginia about maybe 10 years ago i used to work for governor kane the Sen u.s senator now so and the keynote speaker was uh was senator biden and he said things that were absolutely uh unacceptable to Almost every Arab American, Christian, Muslim, Druze, you name it, it was not acceptable. So then, you know, he suggested the breakdown, the, the breakup of Iraq into different states for different, different uh, nationalities and communities. Anyone who has a little bit of Arab affiliation in the sense that we believe that we have a common language, we have a common culture, we will always be, will have more in common than with, say, European and other nations, or Asian nations for that matter. For, personally, I feel that the difference is not huge. I'm going to vote for uh, Biden. I, I, I'm going to do a huge mailing, thousands of people in Virginia, urging them to vote for Biden. But we are concerned very concerned that, you know, he's going to uh, make it and then, you know, he's going to look at the uh, uh, ledger and see that we, the Arab and Muslim community, gave him maybe a million, two million dollars and he received 200 million from the Jewish community and leaders of uh, Jewish groups in America. 
I'm not saying this to encourage this outcome. I'm saying this because I can read, I can read the writing on the wall, uh, Artif. Okay. Okay, um, uh, Mr. Shami, I will have a follow-up question to you in a minute, but uh, uh, let me ask uh, Rene. Rene, good morning. Um, would you explain to us how American women in general feel about a second term for President Trump? Dr. Atif, good morning. I would like to tell you that I could represent all women. I cannot because I have been flabbergasted at the number of women in the United States who have supported uh, President number 45. Uh, with, with all uh, respect to the position of the president, it, the gentleman holding that, well, I can't even use the word gentleman, the person holding that role, the person who, who disrespects women, whose vulgarity toward women is something that is totally unacceptable to me as an American woman and an Arab American woman, I, I find unfathomable that any woman could support that kind of a person. I, so I am sorry that I cannot represent all women because I don't get it. I, I, what, I, what I see in the office right now is a person of, of a very sketchy background with regard to women, women's health, uh, the, the respect of women in this country, uh, the, the disregard that he, he has for women um, and calling names and so on and so forth. So if I, if I may defer that question to just myself, I find his behavior toward women, his actions on women's health, for example, there is not a what was not a woman when he convened, uh, a, a, this was last year when he convened a group of, of uh, leaders, not one woman was in the room, and we're talking about women's health. So there is a disregard, I think, for the role that women play in this country being the majority and also that that we we're hearing um you know he's rallying the troops in a way that is very very unhealthy and and i think that it is it is um misogyny i think it is it is a, a case of um activism against women in the country and we have come so far in america and led the world in in women's rights and we are seeing a backstepping and funding for women's health issues. Uh, it, to me, it has, has taken a back seat. And so I think that, and, and now we have to focus on the coronavirus, which is affecting men and women equally. I'm sorry if I, I can't answer directly, but you, you understand my position is because I've, I am baffled that any woman could support a leader like that. Mr. Springman, um, if the elections were delayed uh, by an act of Congress. Um, the Constitution says the interim president would be the Speaker of the House, in which case uh, Nancy Pelosi would be a transitional um, uh, president. How would that affect the general results uh, at the end of the day? Well, I think that I'm not altogether sure that Nancy Pelosi would be interim president. I would be inclined to believe that Trump would remain in office until the, there was a new election. Um, but I think the big issue is that the Democrat cheek of the great American behind, as one uh, African journalist put it, uh, has refused to accept Donald Trump's election uh, ever since uh, 2017. Uh, they, uh, the day of his inauguration, there were riots and looting in what, downtown Washington, and the Democratic governor of the city eventually released everyone with hardly any punishment whatsoever. Uh, and as we've noted over the last few months, uh, in 25 or 26 states controlled by Democratic governments, uh, we've had race riots, looting, and um, general insurrection. Uh, and I, I think this is going to play into the uh, the upcoming elections. I have uh, contacts that are absolutely outraged at what's happening, and they had nothing but contempt for the Democratic branch of the, uh, the so-called American establishment. I, I have no real difference between the two parties, uh, but the Democrats tend to be more authoritarian and more opposed to civil rights. Uh, Joe Biden, for example, is dead set on abolishing the Second Amendment by executive fiat, uh, and he's the guy who's traveled uh, three times, uh, no, five times to the Ukraine 
uh, in the last three years, the Obama administration to negotiate a deal for his son and for himself um, and to um, guarantee that uh, there would be a quid pro quo for American arms being sold to the Ukraine. This somehow doesn't register with the Democrats. Uh, but uh, by and large, I, I think that the whole election is going to be up in the air. And granted, that the media doesn't really do a great job of telling the truth, uh, although a bit leaks out from time to time when in the Post today, for example, uh, there was a nonprofit group uh, mailing out uh, absentee ballots uh, to bring in unrepresented voters, and they all went to the, the wrong uh, election office. So I, I think that we're going to have real problems with the election, and I think that uh, it's going to be very, very disputed no matter what. Oh, after the break, uh, I'm going to give Mr. Shami um, an opportunity to respond, if he wishes, uh, to Mr. Springman after the break. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab offers a great array of your favorite Mediterranean meals. Meals range from lamb specialties, shawarma sandwiches, seafood dinners, and they offer special big trays of your favorite food, plus much more. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab address is 32839 Northwestern Highway in Farmington Hills. Their phone number is 248-538-9552. That number again is 248-538-9552. And the supermarket is open from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab will definitely leave you satisfied. When it comes to reproductive medicine, IVF Michigan Fertility Centers are the recognized leaders. With locations in Bloomfield Hills and five other cities in Michigan and Ohio, IVF has experts in all aspects of the field. As a founding member of IVF Michigan Fertility Centers, Dr. Nicholas Shama is one of the leading reproductive endocrinologists in Michigan and Ohio. Dr. Shama has performed over 10,000 IVF cases and has helped thousands of couples fulfill their dreams of parenthood. American board certified in both obstetrics obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive endocrinology and infertility, Dr. Nicholas Shama is a very caring, compassionate, expert physician that understands not only the medical but also the emotional toil of infertility on his patients. When it's time, get personalized care from Dr. Nicholas Shama at IVF Michigan Fertility Centers in Michigan and Ohio. Call toll-free 855-952-9600, 855-952-9600. I am Atif Abdel-Jawad. Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Welcome back to our conversation on Radio Baladi, and I want to ask Mr. Shami if he wishes to respond to Mr. Springman, uh, particularly when you heard them say that Mr. Biden went to Ukraine um, twice, perhaps more than once, uh, to negotiate uh, a deal on behalf of his son. Uh, What am I supposed to respond to? He did or not? Yes, he did. What is the um, uh, benefit from knowing this? You know, let people not vote for him if that's the case. But the thing, the sad part is everything that the public knew about uh, Donald Trump, they still voted for him. And, well, he didn't get the popular vote, but the fact, you know, we have a system here, uh, the Electoral College, and he won that, and period. Whatever the outcome is, we as citizens of this great nation should accept and try to change it. We have all the tools, all the means, all the channels to make a difference every four years, in some cases, presidential, six years senatorial, and two years every cycle for one-third of the House, I should make it clear. So, I don't know if I'm supposed to make commentary about whether his son, he did that trip or not on his, 
on behalf of his son or girlfriend. I have no idea. Uh, but I'm assuming he did. And if he did and there is anything incriminating, let them take him to court. And we have both constitutional courts. We have, I mean, I don't know every little line and issue that was raised in the past four years. I don't know how to solve it because I'm not a legal mind. I'm a political activist. So if, if you want me to kind of give you a short answer, maybe he did. Now, right. let, me, let me comment on uh, the title of your episode, which is, uh, you know, what if he refuses to leave the uh, Oval Office? Then we send him to the basement, you know, with, uh, I believe, uh, Broderick, you know, uh, Michael Caine's brother in the movie called uh, Dirty Little Scoundrels where, you know, they put kind of uh, people who socially were not behaving well. So they, this guy stuck his brother in the basement and he used, used him to kind of uh, collect money uh, from ladies who would feel sorry for him. Ladies meaning aristocrats of Europe. So maybe we can use him to raise money for the poor, for the mentally uh, affected here in this country from all the troubles of... Uh, uh, buying buildings and repairing them and not paying contractors, he probably deep inside is suffering, or maybe if he's not suffering, then he really should go to prison instead of to the basement with other mental uh, cases. We'll get back to that question in a minute, but uh, let me uh, ask Rene, uh, uh, both uh, you, Rene, and Saba uh, are opposed to President Trump um, uh, to, for the two different uh, reasons, but uh, uh, now, had it not been for the pandemic, the the U.S. economy was doing very well. Shouldn't we give Mr. Trump a second chance? I think, Dr. Atif, there are very many ways to answer that question. When you say, shouldn't we give him another chance, the economy was doing very well. If we go back to how the country was left at the end of the Obama administration economically. We were on an upward trajectory. And yes, the pandemic has really hit us hard. I think that we have to look at our lack of, as a nation, our lack of preparedness for this pandemic, which caused the, the upheaval that we are all experiencing right now and the decimation of our economy. I cannot say that all of us were lifted up by, by the, the economy because there were many who were left behind as we can see the effect of the coronavirus on families. We here in Michigan have a, a terrible, um, if you will, record of, of uh, equity, economic equity for people. We have families who have been terribly hit hard. Actually, um, I initiated with Nabila Gharib and Darlene Miller a fundraiser to to pr provide families in Detroit with diapers and baby formula and baby wipes because there's a decision that a parent has to make. Do I change the baby's diaper? Do I feed the baby? Because of the, of, uh, both parents have lost their jobs, for example. So I would say that all boats did not rise, and we have to look at that systemic inequality. Uh, I think that there are other reasons why I would not give the president another chance. It's not only about the economy. It's about compassion. It's about the, the dignity of people. And how does one lead? One leads not by creating hatred or fomenting hatred between people of the country, but trying to <coughs> unite them. And so I, I cannot, in any good conscience, vote for someone who is uh, a leader or tries to lead by dividing rather than bringing together. So there are other things besides the economy, I have to say, that inform my vote. The other Arab American women and men whom I know who have found the way we have treated children and incarcerating children, and st still the immigrant children are in, in detention. How we are treating the people who are uh, running their uh, four-wheelers or whatever into crowds of protesters to kill them, and they are very nice people. These are things that I, as an American, as a, an Arab American, 
find deplorable. And I cannot consciously say that's the kind of leader I want because the rest of the world is also looking at the United States, which was once the superpower, and saying, mm, I don't, I don't know. And I, I've seen that from relatives and friends around the world who have said to us, what, what's going on there? And so I don't know if that's the, the long answer or the short answer, sir, but I'm not inclined to give, and I didn't give that, that person a chance, uh, and that was not my vote. But I do encourage people to vote. We're going to run a program on uh, Radio Baladi in Good Morning Michigan about the importance of this election with the League of Women Voters. And we want to, to tell, tell people, whatever your proclivity, you have a right and a responsibility to vote in November. Marco, uh, do you want to respond to either Renee or Saba, Shami, or both? Well, I'll try and respond to both if I can do it and not eat up too much time. Um, <laughs> I, I think that uh, regarding economics, uh, the American economy has not been healthy for a long time. There's an awful lot of unemployed or underemployed people. Uh, and this goes back uh, not only in the Trump years, but to Obama and before. Uh, at one point, the unemployment rate was seen really as 15% because the, the American government doesn't count people who have stopped looking for work. Uh, yeah. I think that the idiot decisions to close down the economy and put everyone out of work uh, because of fear of a virus that came most likely from an American and or an Israeli biowarfare laboratory uh, was absolutely the wrong decision. Uh, and now the, the American government and the American people will be paying for it. Uh, I, I think as far as the Democratic uh, candidates uh, running against Trump, uh, the first time four years ago, Hillary Clinton uh, was a self-confessed murderer, war criminal, and human rights violator who destroyed Libya, who destroyed Syria, and who kept going along with the previous wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and against the, uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran. And uh, I think what uh, happened then was uh, the best chance of, of beating Donald Trump uh, could well have been uh, Bernie Sanders, but the Democratic establishment, uh, beholden to the Clinton uh, aristocracy, uh, simply pushed him to one side. And they've done the same thing again uh, in this election, uh, pushing him aside when he was winning uh, a goodly number of votes and a good percentage of people who wanted change uh, in favor of gropey dopey Joe Biden. Uh, the man who apparently has serious mental problems, doesn't know where he is, what day of the week it is, or... Uh, whatever, who gets into shouting matches with people who dare to criticize him, uh, and who's apparently been hiding out in his basement for some time, fearful of the virus and fearful of being seen in public. Uh, so I, I think uh, the, uh, the Democrats could have run a decent candidate and beaten Trump directly. Now they have a mediocre candidate uh, at best, and I, I see no future uh, in uh, repeating the same mistakes they'd done four years ago. Uh, so uh, I think on, on balance, uh, the, uh, the whole issue is Donald Trump, who makes outrageous statements and does outrageous things, uh, up against someone who's uh, been in politics uh, for a good many years and who, according to one member, of the, a former member of the Maryland legislature that I know, said that he has never had to fight for any political position in his life except the first time he ran for the Senate. So he thinks he's a very weak candidate, and I, I agree. I, I think the Democrats could have done far better, or as my brother puts it, uh, with 330 million people in the United States. Why do we have to choose between gropey dopey Joe Biden and Trump or Stilskin? If Joe Biden is elected, what would you want him to do immediately in the Middle East? I will ask that question to my three guests together when we come back after the break. Life is a nonprofit charity that's provided humanitarian aid and development to people and communities for over 25 years, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Please help improve these efforts. Make your tax-deductible donation to Life now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. When you're looking for the best in optical care, Dr. Iman Nakash is your doctor to see. 
With years of experience and thousands of successful procedures performed, you can trust your eyes to Dr. Iman Nakash. See Dr. Iman Nakash and his professional staff for your eye care needs. There's two locations to serve you. In Hazel Park, call 248-336-3937. 248-336-3937. In Rochester Hills, call 248-299-3937. That's 248-299-3937. I am Atif Abdel Jawad. Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Welcome back to our conversation on Radio Baladi. We are discussing the pandemic and the Trump demic. Now, if Joe Biden is elected as president, what would you want him to do immediately in the Middle East? Let me begin with Saba Shami. Uh, it is a s- several tiers uh, in importance, but they're all important. First of all, we freeze U.S. aid to Israel, whether it's militarily um, uh, or otherwise, and until Israel shows a list of improvements for the conditions of the Israeli citizens who happen to be Arab or Palestinian. Uh, Because as we all know, they are treated, and I am one of them, I came to America from there. I have excellent memories with some of my Jewish friends and neighbors in Haifa and elsewhere, but I have terrible memories of the treatment we receive, the sense of we're lacking something, every time you wanted to do any transaction with the uh, with the system there was a an implied we're not as smart an implied we're not as uh, clean we, there was an implied all kinds of, of of handicapping elements to the brain and to the body and so that would be number one number two uh i think the u.s congress should demand an annual report from Israeli society to show where Arabs are and where the Jewish uh, citizens of that state are and compare uh, a comparison between the two. Otherwise, we really continue to encourage South Africa's policies that are implemented in Israel on a daily basis. We cannot be wishy-washy about human rights. And I call on my Jewish friends in America it is not smart to support the Netanyahu policies. I know that you know some Arab countries are willing to accept whatever it is in exchange for protection from Iran. This is not a smart move for God's sake. The Palestinian population of the whole Middle East and the whole world will never give up on the rights of those who are still in Palestine, inside of Israel, West Bank and Gaza, and those who are still refugees in the surrounding Arab countries and elsewhere. You cannot solve the Jewish problem with creating a Palestinian problem. And if this generation of Arab heads of state and and, uh, strong men in the Arab world are going along with the policies of Trump and Netanyahu, I can assure you the Arab nation, all 300 and some million, are not happy with this. Thank you. Rene. Dr. Atif and and my co-guests, I think that Joe Biden has to address the issue of inequality and violence against the Palestinian people immediately. I think that that's one of the, the promises that Mr. Obama did not make happen when he would, when he, during his last election and the, his first one, 
he, he came to our communities and said, yes, 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 he's going to do something about the Arab-Israeli issue. And that has not happened. It has worsened. And settlements have increased. And violence continues. And deplorable violence. I mean, it's, it's you know, the killing of children and so on and so forth. And the regulation of things like water and heat and things of that nature. Um, there's got to be a solution. It is, it, it, and it is not one that favors one country over the other. I think it is one that we, as Arab Americans, have to be very conscious of and ask uh, and, and demand of our of our government equality and fairness. And these are these are human beings that are treated like animals. And and the word occupation is exactly what has occurred right here. And that is something that the, the, we have not tolerated in other nations. And we seem to continue. So this, this uh, uh, Nakba happened, what, 65, 70 years ago, and there are people still generations living in, under occupation. So I think the United States, and if Mr. Biden is, is elected, that would be one thing I would ask him as an Arab American. How are you going to? What are you going to do? What, what, what leverage are you going to exercise over Israel? Marco? Well, how to deal with the apartheid entity? One, require that they surrender their nuclear weapons, their poison gas, and their biological um, uh, warfare items. Uh, two, uh, end the American uh, subsidy of uh, the Zion Nazis there, uh, the $10 million that the American taxpayer is giving the uh, uh, Israeli uh, terrorist organization, uh, $10 million a day, that has to stop. Uh, there has to be no more deductions, charitable deductions, for purchases of Israeli bonds and contributions to Israeli organizations. Uh, American passports will no longer be, travel be valid for travel to Israel. Israeli passports will no longer be traveled to the United States. The 7 million-odd Palestinians now in exile in the diaspora uh, will return home with Israeli aid. Uh, and... Uh, we will remove from the Office of Foreign Assets Control in the Treasury Department all the Zionists and Israeli citizens now working there and staff them with people who are able to uh, turn the focus of uh, uh, terrorism and financing on Israel to examine exactly what they've been doing with American weapons and American nuclear triggers and everything else that is a controlled uh, substance. Uh, they uh, will be subject uh, to that, just as they've turned their attention to the Iranians trying to wreck that country. We will have a turnabout is fair play on the Israelis themselves. So I think that we really have to uh, put an end to this idea of a two-state solution. Uh, the Zionists invaded Palestine and occupied it in the 1930s and 40s and have been ethnically cleansing the area ever since. And this has got to stop, and we have to recognize this, and we have to start over uh, dealing with the real world, not as the Zionists who want to have it have us believe it is. No, Dr. Uh, Sir, yes, and one comment before you ask me the next question. Well, it uh, is a very interesting. I, I very, very much appreciated both uh, Saba and, and Michael's comments, but I'd also ask, why are we not asking and requiring this, this administration to do the very same that Michael was saying? And that Saba was saying, I mean, waiting for waiting for Biden, where is the voice of the Arab American people to this administration saying, wait a minute, um, you know, you, you're, you're not helping the situation. And so while while I have those same questions from to, to the, 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 the Mr. Biden, I would ask this administration, wait a minute, uh, you need to see through different eyes, different glasses, this situation. So I apologize. I just thought that you know, it's not just on Biden, it's on, on what the American government is doing right now. Or not uh, Mr. Mr. Shami, would you like to... Yes, I would like to say to my friend Brenda that uh, I've been in Washington for nearly 38 years and I've been doing exactly what you said with members of Congress, uh, with the White House at certain occasions when we had somewhat reasonable... Uh, uh, situation uh, like with uh, with uh, Clinton, uh, with Obama, it was okay, but not very good because, as you have indicated, promises, promises, and nothing executed. Our real problem, uh, my friend uh, Brenda and uh, the gentleman uh, Michael, is it? 
No. Yes, Michael. Yeah. Michael. And and this uh, is this is Renee. This is Renee. Renee and Michael. <laughs> Not, yeah. <laughs> what did I call you? Cind uh, call you Cinderella or something? <laughs> you called me. Yes, you did. <laughs> Brenda. Anyway, I apologize. I'm. <laughs> That's okay. Still, I'm still recovering from a year-long cancer. Anyway. Oh, uh, so no, no, I'm healed. I'm healed. Thanks God, I'm healed. And uh, so what I wanted to say is every attempt we had, it was responded to before uh, uh, night fell. In other words, there, we, there were people in these presidents and senators' offices that immediately reported to, to APAC. I don't know how else to say it. You know, you have to name things, give them the proper name. There are people that works for different uh, 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 you know, people in state in uh, federal government that their loyalty is not to the federal government first, it is to a, an organization or two or three in Washington. I don't want to go here, so I don't want anyone to even suspect that I have a, a drop of, of uh, anything against anybody. I have been. Uh, you know, a pacifist for the past almost 50 years now. And I do encourage civil disobedience, but I do not support violence. Not against Jews, not against Muslims, not against Christians, Buddhists, what you name it. So to go from this to the point where we attempted, I mean, they were listening to every word we say to each other. They were prepared, you know, one time, one member of Congress made the mistake uh, and saying, oh, I did hear about it. And it was discussed just between me and one more person. Yes. Okay. So our government, for the lack of a better term, is penetrated by extreme Zionist elements. I'm not talking about the Jewish community. That includes Christians, uh, American, you know, fundamentalist types. Anyway. So never, never... Uh, stopped from trying it's just you know you're dealing with a uh, an arab nation that is controlled by rulers who determine how much noise the population of their countries are allowed to make i think with this description you got the picture michael uh, you heard uh, saba shami say we should send president trump down to the basement of the white house but that was in response to my question. What would happen if President Trump is defeated in the election, but then he refuses to leave the Oval Office? Well, I, I've got to say, uh, well, let me first say salam tak to Mr. Shabi. Uh, but let me say that uh, that's still speculation. Uh, as I noted earlier in the program, uh, that the, the Democrats have refused to accept the results of the 2016 election, uh, in addition to the rioting on the 20th of January of 2017 and the pink pussy hats the next day on the mall. Uh, the Democrats have uh, paralyzed government over the last four years uh, in doing their best to uh, use the coronavirus, to use uh, the Black Lives Matter rioting uh, against Trump. Uh, so I, I think that... Uh, uh, the idea that, that Trump is not going to leave office is something that's been uh, publicized very much by the Democrats, and it is something that is basically a um, an issue that is a non-issue. Uh, you're speculating on things that have not happened yet, probably won't happen, uh, but the whole idea is to paint, is to paint Trump as this, this demon. Uh, certainly he's an idiot, he's made a lot of really bad decisions, uh, and he's surrounded by Zionists, uh, but uh, we haven't gotten to that point, and I don't think that uh, it's useful to speculate on this. I, I think it, uh, it, 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 it enrages people and hardens positions and forces people to take sides who wouldn't necessarily take sides and may well in the end work against the Democrats because people will be able to say, look, you said he was, going to be, uh, he was, going, he was not going to leave office, and he did. Or he's been reelected because you said things like this. I, I think that uh, uh, this is pure and blatant propaganda, uh, such as blaming Trump for the coronavirus. I, I, I really have a tr trouble getting my mind around this. 
Uh, if I may ask, if, if you, are you done, Michael? No. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Michael. I apologize. I just. Well, and basically, that, that's pretty much it. I, I, I think the Democrats uh, are using riots and uh, uh, wild, intemperate statements to uh, change the next election. I mean, look what they did with this ridiculous impeachment process. Nancy Pelosi and the uh, uh, all of the Jewish members of Congress who supported her in, in uh, getting him uh, impeached, uh, but then acquitted uh, because... Uh, they didn't like his attitude toward Congress. They had plenty to impeach him on, uh, murder, war crimes, and human rights violations, uh, uh, attacking uh, Syria with 16 missiles, attacking Yemen, supporting the Saudis attacking Yemen, and so forth. Uh, what he's doing to Iran is unconscionable, uh, but they won't impeach him on that because the Democrats themselves are complicit. They are the ones who have uh, fostered war from Afghanistan to Iraq to um, <laughs> Uh, Libya to Syria, and uh, these are the people who created the uh, the Arab Afghan Legion. That I talk about in my book Visas for Al Qaeda, uh, which is used to destabilize and destroy governments the United States doesn't like. So I, I think that uh, if you wanted to impeach him on something, you could, but unfortunately, you'd have to impeach the entire Congress over the last seventy five years. Okay, uh, let me, okay. let me, Saba, w would you hold on just a second? We'll get your response after the break. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab offers a great array of your favorite Mediterranean meals. Meals range from lamb specialties, shawarma sandwiches, seafood dinners, and they offer special big trays of your favorite food, plus much more. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab address is 32839 Northwestern Highway in Farmington Hills. Their phone number is 248 Five three eight nine five five two. That number again is two four eight five three eight nine five five two. And the supermarket is open from eight a.m. to nine p.m. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab will definitely leave you satisfied. Are you going to start a restaurant or a grocery store soon? Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Naji Abood at seven three four seven four four nine seven nine six. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Najee Aboud now, 734-744-9796. New concept products and design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. New concept products and design, new location, 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Najee Abood, 734-744-9796. I am Atif Abdel Jawad. Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East, live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Welcome back to our discussion on Radio Baladi, and go ahead, uh, Mr. Saba Shami, respond to Michael Springman. Thank you, Springman. Uh, I mean, Atif, sorry. Uh, Mr. Springman, what I want to say is, let's be, uh, I made a mistake earlier in the program, I answered an email, so my mind was away for about 30 seconds. When we participate in a talk show, and I'm not preaching anybody, I'm preaching myself first, we need to, to pay attention to words uttered by colleagues on the program so we don't uh, do an injustice by describing what they say. I invoked the title of the program. I didn't say anything about him refusing to leave the White House. I thought I would add a little comic uh, twist, which I noticed, you know, none of the four of us has enough of that uh, kind of 
uh, lightheartedness to kind of laugh at something. As as I was reading the title of the of the segment of the program, uh, this business of the uh, of the movie uh, called uh, "Dirty Little Sc Scoundrels," uh, the the uh, the two stars were Michael Caine, the British, and Steve Martin, the Californian, and they both uh, kind of uh, collaborate. After uh, Michael Caine, who was the, the uh, Don Juan of the um, uh, uh, French Riviera, he was basically robbing very wealthy European and American women of their, or at least part of their fortunes. So they decided to work together. And he says, on one condition, you do what I tell you. Cain was the boss, in other words. So sure enough, you know, he actually... Uh, made him dress like a, uh, a retarded, uh, uh, a handicapped kind of, I, you know, the description right now escapes my, uh, my vocabulary. But the point is, uh, he kept him in the basement because he was not presentable. Now, what, whatever Atif's question is, is, is his question. My comic i i thought but clearly i need to in the future weigh how much uh, comic it is uh, i thought of this movie and i thought okay then we'll send him to the basement to join roderick steve martin the european um uh royal who happens to live in the basement of his brother in nice france that's all i meant there was no attempt to be nasty or extra nas nasty or uh, more than usual nasty. I am not nasty. Period. And that's okay, let's let, uh, Saba, let's let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, now, um, uh, I want um, uh, Michael uh, to give me one big reason why President Trump should not be elected. And I want Rene and Saba next. To give me one big reason why President Trump should be elected, Michael. Oh, sure. Well, one reason why he should not be elected is his continuing attacks on Iran and his sanctions, which have crippled the government, crippled the population and uh, the economy, uh, starving people, cutting their uh, their pay, cutting their benefits, cutting the availability of food. Uh, preventing them from uh, exporting and importing goods like any normal country in the world. Uh, I think what he's done to Iran uh, with his sanctions is outrageous, and that this business of installing Sigal Pearl Mandelker as Undersecretary of the Treasury for um, uh, uh, financial intelligence and terrorism uh, was a, uh, was a appalling. Uh, she was born and raised in Israel, somehow came to the United States, somehow had high-level positions in the Justice Department and in the um, uh, uh, Department of Homeland Security, and then she became Undersecretary of the Treasury in charge of sanctions, and she immediately slapped sanction after sanction after sanction on the Iranians, including people and a conference that I had had the great opportunity to attend in Mashhad uh, a bit more than two years ago. She claimed they were anti-Semitic and that they were recruiting uh, uh, spies for Iran and uh, all sorts of nonsense. And unfortunately, uh, every bit of, it, of her statements was untrue because I was there and no one ever recruited me. And the two, pe two people uh, uh, who had been approached were approached by Iranian intelligence outside of the, uh, the conference itself. So uh, basically, the conference focused on Palestine and the Israeli persecution of the Palestinians, and this is what she didn't like. Renee, the question, Dr. Atif, was the why should is, Trump? Uh, I, yeah. I know you, you are not in favor of <laughs> voting for Mr. Trump for several reasons, but uh, right. give me one big reason, only one big reason, why. President Trump should be elected. One big reason. I think that, as I have observed, he has put uh, North Korea 
at bay. He has been able to, um, let me say, neutralize, maybe, uh, China and, and is looking at things that, you know, from, from the United States, what, what they have taken, our intellectual property, and so on and so forth. Those are two of the, the main reasons we don't see that, that at least uh, obvious threat from North Korea. And I think that um, from that point of view, those were positives. Okay, Mr. Shami. Let me put it this way. I respect your question, but I'm going to answer it my way. <laughs> I will vote. I will vote for Biden because he is the least of, of two that I'm not happy with. That's a good answer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Springman. Uh, now, you served at one point in Germany. Mr. Trump is withdrawing or planning to withdraw U.S. troops from Germany. How good or bad this idea is? Well, I see it as a good idea. A lot of the Germans, especially the ones I've talked to who uh, have some knowledge of the war and the 10 years following, uh, are opposed to it. But I think that 75 years of occupation of Germany has to end. Uh, there is no reason for uh, what I think they're claiming 35,000 American soldiers, sailors, and airmen still in Germany. Uh, they shouldn't be there. Uh, they should all be removed from the country and brought back to the United States, not moved to Belgium, not moved to Italy, not moved to Poland. Uh, I, I think that it is, is in the interest of the United States and in, in the interest of the Federal Republic of Germany. Um, but Trump, of course, is doing it for the wrong reasons, claiming that he's punishing the Germans for not paying enough towards support of NATO. Uh, Rene, um, Sir. When, when Mr. Trump congratulated Chinese President Xi for his election president for life, Trump mm -hmm. also wondered if the U.S. should have a president for life. What does that tell you? <laughs> and I have only a limited time. <laughs> yes, sir. What that, what that tells me is is puts me back to the the days of Idi Amin and the and the dictators. And this is not what the the twentieth amendment of the Constitution says that we we have we have elections for president and vice president that shall end at noon on the twentieth day of January. And and uh, the the business of being president for life just reminds me of dictatorship and and the, 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 the tamping down of this democracy. Saba Shami, briefly, please. Well, I personally would recommend sending him, Mr. Trump, to Zimbabwe, and he can be president for life there. Thank you very much, all of you. Saba Shami, Attorney Michael Springman, and Rene Ahe. And thank you all for joining us. Wishing Saba good health. Thank you. Uh, for recovery, thank you for being with us, and I will see you again the first Friday next month. Have a good weekend. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, everybody. Thank, thank you. Thank you.